Hello, uh, my name is Andrew. I'm here with Textile. I just want to take an opportunity to share what Textile is, what we're trying to do, and kind of where we fit into uh, this whole ecosystem and what we're trying to help other developers do and, and, and users. So at a high level, Textile is a suite of tools for developers to build totally custom, resilient, decentralized apps that can connect anyone in the world. And it serves as a platform where those apps can give users control and access of their data. And that's really the mission at Textile. Uh, we really think that the whole internet should be transformed uh, so that users can have complete access and ownership of the data that they create. If you think of the way that the internet has evolved since the early days, uh, your personhood on the internet used to be maybe a nickname, an email, uh, but uh, over the years, it's, it's really evolved to being everything from your, your nickname and your email to your browsing history, your dating profile, your sexual preferences. Everything about you is now uh, mirrored in digital data. And it's really peculiar that we allow centralized organizations to collect this data and really own it. So they own this uh, really deep and meaningful information about each of us. And it's actually a race between many companies to grab as much of this data as possible and never return it to you in any functional, uh, meaningful way. So when we started thinking about solutions to this problem, we realized that the internet just really isn't set up for building solutions to this problem. Uh, and that's when we found IPFS. So we saw IPFS as, as solving some really big problems uh, to the data ownership uh, uh, models of the web. So IPFS for us allows us to rethink that relationship between users, apps, and their data, allowing us to break out of the centralized web. So some, uh, some of the core features of IPFS, like content addressable data, allow us to think about data that's permissioned to applications to use, but can never be hidden from the user, can never be taken away from the user. Uh, and you can build on those simple properties and, and think of a whole new world uh, where data is permissioned out to many apps and many services that can be continuously adding new value on top of your personal data uh, without taking it away from you. So when we started approaching uh, that vision and thinking about how we would build that, we realized that one of the first steps was how do we get more developers who believe in that kind of future to build applications. So that's what I mean when I say it's a suite of tools for, for builders. Um, so if you're a developer and you want to build products on IPFS that are cross-platform, so using mobile, using desktop, using the web, and you want to give users access and control of their data, and you want to leverage secure building blocks, so end-to-end -end encryption, uh, encrypted in at rest data, uh, and all the other good things that IPFS really promotes, then we try to make that easy for you. And on top of that, our tools are open source and pretty transparent. So what we think of is that these apps can really build together. We want to collaborate with a community of application builders and think about how we can make a, a really valuable data set for each individual user. So some of the, a few of the examples of some of these core tools that we make available to developers are things like simple identity tools. So in textile, we don't take any uh, extreme view about a textile identity that you have to adopt, but we give every app access to things like a shared registry of, of public keys that people can attach display names, and then that, and then that uh, registry is actually searchable, so you can easily connect uh, users across, across applications. Uh, and those are extendable, so you, you can do more than display names and avatars, but you can add uh, you know, other things for your application specifically. They're dynamic, so users can change them, uh, s uh, customize them for each application. They're verifiable, obviously, and, and like I mentioned, they're discoverable, and, and all things are cross-application here. Um, encryption everywhere. So a big thing with using uh, IPFS in consumer applications is you really want to be thinking a lot about how you're going to deal with encryption and how you're going to deal with storing private keys on behalf of users and giving users those, those keys at the end of the day. And so in Textile, uh, one of the things that happens is every user gets a private wallet. And inside of that wallet, they can create any number of accounts to attach to different applications. Uh, and Textile sort of just makes this really easy for applications. You don't have to think deeply about how you're going to do it. Um, you can just use the Textile uh, on-device APIs to provision new wallets. And in the future, uh, we're moving really quickly towards having services where you can have simple OAuth-based uh, login for users. And behind the scenes on a server side, you can be provisioning wallets 
For users who might ne not necessarily want to manage private keys or secret phrases today, but where you think over a couple of years uh, the internet's moving and tools are getting easier, so you want to you want to get those users onboarded into your application quickly today, uh, but make it so they can always get that private wallet um, back out and store it in the future. The next thing that your app is probably going to want to do is um, synchronize data. So uh, most applications that you use on mobile devices are using a solution like Firebase for uh, creating data on, uh, on in the app and synchronizing it uh, uh, with you know, the developer data or across users for, say, like live uh, chat. And so we think about this through uh, solving this through a decentralized database called Threads. Um, decentralized databases are always a, a little bit more than just a, a traditional database. So a thread is actually, uh, the database component of a thread is a local SQLite database. But then it's a lot more on top of that for how you can synchronize that data across many users. Um, and it includes things like pinning services so that data that you're adding to threads gets, uh, uh, is recoverable in the future. And it bakes in all, those, uh, all, all the steps of encryption, both at rest and in, in transit. Uh, and they also have rules for access control so that users can, you can have multiple users join the same thread, share and collaborate on data sets, uh, and be totally private among those users. The next thing is interoperability. So um, we think that the decentralized web, the way that these building blocks are coming together, it's really important that we think about how you take uh, the developments in one application and make them accessible to the next application. And so what I mean by that is illustrated with one of our um, uh, sort of cornerstone applications in textile called Textile Photos. So in Textile Photos, uh, users can upload and share photos uh, in a, in a release, uh, upcoming release. They'll be able to sync their entire camera roll and have, a private have their private wallet populated uh, with photos. And so for a user, that offers a really great service where they can encrypt and store all their photos on IPFS. Um, and for other app developers, that's super interesting because the way those uh, photos are, are stored, they're self-documenting. And if another application is given permission to that feed, uh, it, can it can immediately get access to all of the user's photos to, to do other kinds of services or uh, you know, um, filters or rendering or other collaboration tools. Uh, and so this is just one type of feed, but we're looking at all, all other kinds of feeds too. So social media feeds, video feeds, um, document feeds, and thinking about how many applications can be building value for users in a lot of different ways on these core feeds of data. Okay, so those are all the pieces that you would be building an application on a device or in a, in a, uh, on a desktop application, for example. But there's also some services that we run on the network that uh, help make consumer applications run a little bit um, uh, more sort of fluidly on the network. And so uh, we call those textile cafes. They're textile nodes that basically run as, as in server mode, so they're always online. Uh, and they help us add stability and recoverability and connectivity. And so I'll explain some of the things that uh, cafes do for an application uh, that, that provide these. So the, the first thing that cafes do is they pin threads. And so threads are encrypted, so this is a, a, pretty, this is a trustless uh, flow. So uh, a peer on the network can take a thread, one of these decentralized databases, stream it to a cafe, uh, encrypted in a way that the cafe has no idea what's inside of it, but the cafe can actually store the blocks of that, of that thread. And in that way, um, this is a really important feature for most consumer applications. If the user were to lose their phone, uh, as long as they have their, their root key or they have a custodial service hanging on to that, they can recover their threads. Um, and so they could go to the cafe where this information was pinned, unlock uh, only actually one row of the database and then recover all the other rows sequentially after that. It's also a great service for light clients that don't want to hang on to an entire database. They can push history to a cafe and just hang on to the latest information. So right, so that's the recovery services. So um, users can de designate any cafe that they want to be uh, providing recovery services. And they can actually select multiple cafes and have redundancy or run their own in their own home if they want. Um, they provide user connectivity tools. So this is a really common problem in consumer applications where you have two peers that want to communicate uh, using libp2p, but one peer is going to be offline. You open your phone, you send a message, uh, 
you put your phone down, you close the app. And in a mobile device, for example, that app is going to be aggressively shut down a lot of times. And so that you're, you're not necessarily going to even find the other peer on the network. They're not going to have their phone opened on that app. And so what text, uh, Textile Cafes will do is what's called inboxing. And so again, they'll take an encrypted blob on, on my behalf and leave it for you so that when you come back online, you can go to a cafe and ask, hey, have I missed any messages? And it'll say, here's a bunch of things uh, for you to download. You grab them and you, you recover the state uh, of your conversation. Hosted wallets, so this was an asterisk. This is something that we're working on now, but giving users um, just traditional login so that then they can still get all the benefits of encryption uh, if they're not quite ready to be managing their own wallet. Um, and this for us is just really a bridge to get more people to where we want to go. Uh, and there's a lot of other great teams that are thinking about how to solve the usability problems of private wallets and storing secret phrases. And so we really want to tap into them as they um, get, get into the hands of more users. Finally, it's all cross-platform, so we have libraries in, uh, in Android and uh, iOS and React Native and JavaScript and Golang. Uh, and so you can run things in the, in the uh, command sh shell and you can run things uh, on the mobile device. And this is really great because it makes it so that you can move from an idea to launching into users' hands really quickly. And so an example of that is a project I built uh, for this weekend that took about five hours. Uh, it was, it's, it's simply a game of tag. But if you think about the properties of a game of tag, it's a really fun system to try to build in a, uh, on a decentralized network. You have verified exchanges of information. You have this, uh, this chain of events that you want to know what the state is at every step. And so we started thinking through this, and, and I think it was like 5 p.m., and uh, a colleague of, of mine uh, and I were in a conversation. We said, we should just build it into a mobile app. And five, five hours later, I had the... Uh, the workable demo where people could be tagging each other. Uh, and so that's really exciting and it lets you really think um, quickly and see what's possible and then move on to bigger ideas. And that's what a lot of teams are doing with Textile now. Um, and if you go to our, we have a public Slack channel, it's just, if you go to slack.textile.io, uh, you can get the, uh, the invite into that Slack channel and we have a really active community that's there sharing what they're building and thinking through things like how to, how to structure their threads and how to build interoperability. So we have people working on uh, health data and documents and, uh, and photos obviously and, and even more. So that's a really cool thing to check out and that's the quick overview of Textile. So thanks.